everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your secret identity to the masses? Oh, I love the very community. Uh, that was just the right amount of emphasis on it. This is, hello, I'm Julie Erickson, also known as, oh, lots of anime names, but I guess best known for Hanako. And it's very nice to have you onto the show today. I know that our live chat is uh, buzzing with people who are very happy as well. And um, they, they know this question is coming because I, I'm required to ask it every interview because it's the most basic of basic question. Uh, but essentially, how did you initially get into acting? It's really not something a lot of people naturally fall into. Oh, uh, but I, I don't know because my parents... Uh, totally didn't approve of acting, period. And I guess the way I actually got into it mostly was I went to audition or to seek a job, shall I say, at Disneyland back when it was opening. That will give you a clue as to how old I am. Don't do the math, please. And uh, in order to work for Disneyland, you had to be 16 years old. That's California child labor laws, blah, blah, blah. Unless you were an entertainer. And so I said, well, what's that involved? What can I do? I was 15. And they said, well, you go and you audition for these different things, one being uh, hula dancers at the Tahitian Terrace. And I said, okay, I watched that on TV. Honest to God, this is what I said. And I, I was so naive. So I went and stood at the back of the line and watched them do their hula dances. And I said, I can do that. I can do that. You know, from chorus line. And sure enough, I got up to the top and I said, I can do that. I did that. I did that. And they kicked me. Oh, now, no. Was, oh, yeah. No, no. I had never had a, a lesson in my life. But I was kind of unique because I had long red hair, I had a red ponytail, and they liked me physically to fit in with the dark hairs and the blondes and the others they had picked. And they said, you did, you never had a lesson? I said, no, sir. And they said, well, if you can do that, we can teach you anything. And I said, okay, cool. That's fantastic. I, yeah, went on from there with Disney. Well, now, I, I got to admit that must be one of those dream jobs when you're a child just because, you know, the happiest place on earth. Oh, let me tell you, Walt Disney used to walk Disneyland once a month to make sure that his people were happy. No lie. That is so amazing to hear. Like, that, that Disney is essentially my entire childhood. And mm -hmm. so to to hear about, like, the history of it. Because the, the history of Disney is so rich. It's just really interesting to me. Yeah, it has, it has evolved into more of a business now. I mean, it was still a business then, but it was a happy business. And we were all happy to be doing what we did. And he made sure that not only were we happy, but when we were happy, our customers, our clients, the people that came and played with us, we're happy to. Well, now, from there, you obviously continued to pursue acting, I assume. I, I'm going to assume your parents weren't very thrilled, but... <laughs> no, they weren't very thrilled. You know, this, but, but say I'm 15 years old, so it was like, eh, she'll grow out of this. And I went on to do Disney films. I danced in the beach movies and stuff like that. And I got more and more confidence and more and more experience and I had a friend who worked for Hanna-Barbera and I loved doing voices, any kind of voices. I do all kinds. For them, I did like frogs and they talk turtle real well and yuppie, 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 dogs. And I, I did sneezes and laughs and all kinds of things. And it was just fun, fun, fun. And that's how I started with voices. Well, from voices, how did you initially get into anime? Because a, a lot of actors will do, you know, uh, commercial and cartoons and never even touch anime. 
Well, Disney was, of course, anime, but it was a different kind of anime. Very true. Because they wrote, uh, we did the voices, then they drew the cartoons. But And so when I moved to Texas, after my kids were uh, raised and out on their own, I wanted to go back into the business because, well, I had been doing the business, but not as much. I was raising a family, and I was doing it part-time, and I was not living in Texas at the time, which is, by the way, y'all, y'all, did you notice that, where I live now, and I got an agent here, and immediately all of the credits I had before were kind of wiped out. It's just a way of the business of like, oh, I don't know you, and if I don't know you. So it took a few years for me to get back into even voiceovers, and then we have a lovely, lovely group out here, Funimation, who voice, well, as I'm sure all your fans know, so much of the Japanese cartoons. And I went out and auditioned and absolutely loved it and was lucky enough to pick up quite a few continuing roles. Continuing the roles are always nice because there's a potential for like video games or it just keeps going on and on because anime just has some episodes or some series that are like 500 to 600 episodes. I know I'm doing one right now. Thank you, God. (laughs) Which is One Piece and it's huge and very long and still continuing and I've done two different continuing voices on one piece and it, yeah it, it you know it's a, it's a nice source of continuous income you go oh that oh look I kept doing it again hello you bet I'll be there and I don't have to fix my hair I don't have to fix my face I can just go in and do it and play and bounce off the walls. Yeah, that's uh, that I hear is the magic of it. Uh, the only restrictions are you can't wear, like, jingly janglies because uh, they might be picked up on the mic. But otherwise, you know, hey, I'm in my pajamas and I got my uh, my little um, slippers on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And, and if you could see some of us, you would go, oh, no, no, that is not what they sound like. <laughs> Now, I'm just trying to imagine all the uh, voice actors I've seen in real life and how they come to the, you know, session with bedhead and they haven't brushed their teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, you didn't even have bad breath. It doesn't matter. You're only, it's only coming back on you, so it's fine. Well, hopefully the engineer doesn't have to go in there. <laughs> no, they don't. Uh-uh. No, I, well, they come in to adjust the mic, you know. But you really don't have to worry if you've had onions or anything else like you do with live acting, which I've done a lot, thank you, God, again, of um, on camera and films and commercials, et cetera, as well as anime. But anime is one of my favorites because I can just let go and just be anything. Yeah, there there aren't really that many restrictions. I mean, it's just what's drawn. Obviously, you have the timing restriction because you have to fit, you know, oh, yeah. what what you're saying within a certain uh, certain lip flap. But uh, you know, one day you might be an octopus. Another day you might oh. be a ladybug. <laughs> well, I I've done mostly voices, but uh, I got to be a, a mechanical spider in. Uh, in one episode, let's see, what, which one was that? I think that was, uh, oh boy, uh, D-Man, and I was this evil mechanical, oh God, it was fun. I had just a great time. It sounds like it was I, fun. <laughs> it was, and, and I've done uh, four pages of dialogue in French for a Col de Paris, I, I go on there, and they God, I had some high school (laughs) French because I uh, was able to read it and I had to read it and study it a little harder before I could um, really do justice to it. Going from I'm going from English to anime to to, from Japanese to English to French, it it was like, (laughs) but it was fun. 
I, I would struggle so bad with that personally. In fact, most of the staff makes fun of my Japanese pronunciation, which is fine by me. <laughs> I am blessed. My best girlfriend is Japanese. Oh, there you go. So you, yeah. you get a little cheat sheet. <laughs> uh-uh. No, actually, she doesn't speak Japanese. I speak more Japanese than she does. Interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's not One as much of a little... cheat sheet as you thought. That was, yeah, it's one of the little ironies of age. I just know the basic introductions um, when we're when we're about to interview somebody, um, and mm-hmm. that's that is I've practiced for sure. I know the pronunciation on that, but uh, sometimes when you have to read certain news stories and it's you know a certain anime, and I'm like by this certain creator, I say their name completely wrong, and everyone uh, makes fun of me for it, even my listeners. So uh, you know what, guys, I'm trying. Yeah, and I'm honey. Sometimes I have to ask what my name is. So I say, who am I? I'm Ogun. Okay. Ogun. Okay, that's who I am in this one. Hadako was in, it was an easy one. So, I, and I actually, I've gone to cons with, uh, in the Panako character, and it's amazing because I actually look like the character when I go. I mean, if I'm going to be the character... I'm going to be it all over, and I do the whole makeup and glasses and pipe, and I look like Tanako. That's really cool to hear that, you know, despite uh, despite your age, and I hope you don't take offense to that, um, you're willing to I hate cosplay. none whatsoever. I don't take offense. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm glad to be where I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, it's it's kind of like, you know, it's it's hard to drag, uh, for example, some of my older family members to a, a convention or to just, you know, show them here's what I involve myself with. But to hear that you're actually dressing up in costume is uh, very admirable. Yes. Well, oh, yeah, I love I love Halloween. <laughs> I get to let my imagination run rampant. It's almost as good as anime. <laughs> Well, no, uh, talking about that character, though, from uh, Fulmina Alchemist, uh, that must be really interesting to be able to be a part of a show that has such a cult following. Oh, yeah, and besides, they get to know you and to know, I mean, deep down, where Kanako came from, why she does what she does, why she has the mannerism she has, why she is so um, staid and... Unjuly, unme, <laughs> very different from me, which is really cool. I know that uh, for quite a while, uh, people wherever you go, especially at conventions, you know, you would, you just couldn't not hear Full Metal Alchemist. So I, I, I'm kind of curious. Did you get to go to conventions during that time? You know, when it was at its peak, if you, if you will, of popularity. Yeah, several years ago was when. In, maybe three, four years ago, is when uh, it was really hot. And yes, I got to. And they, I mean, I would I would barely walk into the area and, and they're all over. Oh, my God, oh, look, we know who it is. Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. And then I'd get them one of my, my stares and my voices and, and my Panaco. And they'd go, wow. And, and that's good that you've lived up to their expectations. Well, now I'm I'm kind of curious. What is your favorite thing about conventions that you know, uh, experiencing it as a fan? The passion, because uh, those people that go to conventions, they love it. They are so involved. I think that's terrific. I can agree with that. I mean, some people, you know, plan way ahead of time or they spend uh, who knows how long on their costume or they're just they're I, I very much when I try and explain a convention to somebody, I'm like, think of it like a three day Disneyland trip for anime fans. Like that's the best way I can describe it because people have this sort of adrenaline rush to them. And you you get to see them come to life and you get to touch them. You can actually reach out and touch them, and especially um, when the actual voice actors come to anime conventions in costume, in their own character. Then it's like, 
I, I think it's especially thrilling for the audiences and for the participants that you're flesh and blood. That too. I mean, for some, I've definitely seen fans who are like, oh my God, it's so and so. And they're, you know, they're up on this pedestal and the dreamy kind of fangirly voice. I've seen that a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's why I'm I'm using my natural voice. Everybody knows what I sound like with Nako. Everybody knows what I sound like in in One Piece. Uh, even though, I, like I said, I've done two roles in um in one piece, I was Amazon, and um, also now I'm um, Kuroku. Yes, I'm drunk, and I love doing that. The only thing I have to be careful with is my pronunciation, so you can understand my words. I can see how that would be sort of difficult. I wonder if drunkenness is in a character is kind of like having an accent almost. Pretty much, because you have to stay with it. And she is, she constantly has a, a bottle of wine in her hand. And so she's constantly on the edge of being impaired. Except I am not. I am a professional. I know exactly what I'm doing. As I've said so in several episodes, don't worry about me. <laughs> well, for the fans out there who want to get their own drink, assuming you're of age, uh, we're going to take a short break here on 91.8 The Fan, but don't go anywhere because our special guest isn't. So keep it tuned to your favorite station where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. <laughs> hey, everybody out there. You're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. My special guest is obviously still here. And that's always a good thing. Thank you for sticking around, and thanks for all the listeners for sticking around as well. And we were talking a little bit behind the scenes about any projects you wanted the listeners to know about, anything that has recently come out or that you're recording that you can talk about. Oh, I love things I can talk about. Okay, if you want to stalk me, I'm on Facebook. Uh, or you want to just talk to me. Yeah, anyway, I am on Facebook. I don't do the tweet thing. I don't. Uh, there's too much other stuff out there for me to do. I do good to keep up with my emails and my Facebook. So I, I do have a tweet account, but I, I don't. Anyway, be that <laughs> as it may, yeah, I've got. Uh, I'm bl really blessed because I am working on some uh, films as well as anime, which I love anime, and I have done live anime films as well as, well, live, no, they're not anime, but with those characters in, in live. And uh, everything is listed on, well, not everything, but a lot of the stuff is listed on IMDb. So if you're interested, you could go on there. And Julie is J-U-L-I, no E, Erickson, E-R-I-C-K-S-O-N. And that's me. And I'm really... I'm just an ordinary person that gets to do some pretty extraordinary things. I get to play for a living. Uh, my husband and I both say that we want to be actors. That way we don't have to grow up. And That's perfect. I, <laughs> don't, it's very true. Um, a project right now that is near and dear to my heart is a film that I wrapped about a month, a month and a half ago called Loveland. And Loveland is about a facility for people that are mentally and physically challenged. And I play the superintendent of the school. Now, I've, I've done, if you look on my resume, you'll see a lot of major films. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do that. Uh, I get to be a lot of different people. But Loveland, being the superintendent of this facility, is am I enabling the people or am I really helping them? But the most extraordinary part of the film is that all of the people with all of the actors have the mental or physical disability of the character in the film. And I think that's really wonderful when we can use real people 
and real actors who are struggling every day to overcome whatever difficulties they have in in those roles. And so that's very close to my heart. That's really surprising, and it sounds really interesting because you don't get to see that very often. I, I guess mm-hmm. for for some people, because I, I mean, if you'll excuse me to get on a small tangent, um, sometimes you know people on the internet or what have you can be a little bit uh, sensitive to certain things. So you know, I, I'm wondering if that was initially a taboo because somebody somewhere would complain about it. Um, so it's nice to see a movie doing something like that. <laughs> Yeah, they're right now. They're um, they did this on a shoestring, and it was done with the auspices of the um, association that deals with with people with problems um, or difficulties. I should challenges. That's the word I was looking for. I'm old. I don't have all the words right there all the time. Uh, you know, it's written for me. Boy, that's easy. Um, and and they were on the set and dealing with it, with everything every day. And these, these young people, because it's primarily youngsters, although there are some older people involved as well, but it's a, a story about a young woman, and she doesn't believe she belongs there. She has a traumatic, a traumatic brain injury. And we shot the film, got it all paid for, and now they're on a Kickstarter campaign for uh, to get the money to really finish it up, you know, um, with the music and the sweetening and all of the color correction, all of the things that most people don't even think about that go into a film. So you can find uh, Loveland also on Facebook. And I told you all about that one. Oh, and then to go the other direction, next week I'm shooting a film Bigfoot Wars. That sounds I'm, fairly um, <laughs> fairly hilarious, depending on the context. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm versatile. And I get to play a real sleazeball in this one. Uh, it's starring C. Thomas Howell and Judd Nelson. And uh, C. Thomas Howell plays my son in it. And it's going to be a blast because I get to play a character completely different. Plus, I am blessed. This Also this next week, I just get back off the set, and the USA Film Festival is honoring me, sort of, with a um, film that I did a couple of years ago that won the Universal City Horror Fest. They have a, a contest for shorts every year called Jasper, and I'm, I star in that, and they're going to show Jasper, and then we're going to do a Q&A afterwards, and it's, I uh, can't give it away because it's really fun. Well, I love uh, films that can be a little bit, uh, you know, scary, so I'll definitely oh, have, oh, to, oh, 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 have to look into that. <laughs> I, I, I would assume fun. those would be really fun because either you're screaming your head off or you're hurting somebody uh, pretend oh, I wise. Like, I love to hurt people. Yeah. It's fun. Beautiful. <laughs> My husband says, I don't know who I'm going to wake up with, but I think it'll be safe. <laughs> well, let's hope. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If I if I get mad, I just might bite his neck. <laughs> and for the listeners out there, I do believe uh, another series that's come out this year that uh, they should know about is Tori Cole. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm doing that. Oh, yeah, they, uh, thank you, Lord. I that I am busy doing all these different. I've uh, got uh, I'm in Hell Girl and oh and 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 Darker Than Dark and and I. Sometimes, to be perfectly honest, we go and we do voices, and then we go away, and people will say, was that you I heard on, that?" and I go, huh? Because it, it's what we do and what we love to do, but not who we are, so we don't live with the, you know, this is my glory, I am this, I am that, it's like... 
this is this is my job. Thank you, Lord, that I get to play it every day and enjoy it so much. And um, but it's something that you go and you do. They say, have you worked with movie stars? Yes, I have. And they're just people like we are. Actually, I've. it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. I've had people be like, how can you do what you do? Like, how can you talk to people? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm just talking to them. <laughs> I mean, there have been instances where I've been nervous. I think nervousness helps you with any sort of performance because mm-hmm. it, it, it gets your adrenaline kicking. But, you know, when it comes right down to it, you're just con- uh, conversing about somebody, uh, about their job, you know. Um, yeah. And and yeah. I respect what you guys do. That's why we have uh, you guys on the station all the time. Uh, it's just, uh, it's kind of interesting to hear it from uh, the perspective of everybody else when they're like, wow, I couldn't do that. And I'm like, yeah, you can. Just talk. <laughs> you talk to your friends every day. Hopefully, we are your friends. Because that's, that's the, you're the reason we do what we do. All of you. Now, uh, since we're nearing the end of this interview, uh, just uh, because we're running out of time, I know, it's sad. Uh, We were wondering if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Oh, oh, sure, of course. I have no idea. Sure, I'm I'm saying I will, and I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? Basically, we ask if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. A radio bump? Yes, we basically ask if you could say a line for us. Oh, of course. Duh. Awesome. What Basically, voice do you want me to use? What accent? What country do you want me to be from? I do all kinds of accents, too. Well, the fun thing is is you get to decide the way you want to say it. We leave it all in your hands. We just oh, ask... Oh, i gotta, I got to hear the line first before I know where I'm from. We, we just ask if you could say, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can say you're an actress, you do character voices, uh, different characters, whatever you want to put there, and mm-hmm. you're tuned into. Ninety-one point eight, the fan. Okay, I can do that. Well, then, whenever you're ready, the mic is all yours. Hi, guys. I'm Julie Erickson. I'm a voice actress, a film actress, and anything else that pretty well pays the bills as far as film, TV, and commercials are concerned. And you are tuned in to ninety-one point eight, the fan. Thanks for listening. See, that wasn't so hard. I think you're a professional. Yeah. I really do. Oh, 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 really? I think you should. Yeah, I, th- I think you might want to take that as a day job. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like the last part. But that's okay. We would change the book, the smile on the Mona Lisa if we could. <laughs> well, yeah. for any of the listeners out there, do you have any words of wisdom, any Danian advice, any weather forecasts you'd like to share with them before you leave? <laughs> weather forecast? Uh, no, not weather. I, I used to do weather long time ago in Spokane, Washington, but I don't do that no more. Uh, it's fun, but no. I guess my biggest thing is if you have to do this, if you have to be a voice actor, if you have to do it, if you have to draw anime, if you have to write anime, if you have to write scripts, don't give up. Live the dream. Oh, I'm going to get emotionally involved. I do. Um, if you can dream it, you can do it. That's all I have to say. I can tell you're a Disney kid. <laughs> but it's good <laughs> advice. <laughs> it's very much it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. We really appreciated it. And thank you guys, Chris, Jackie. It was a real pleasure. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8 The Fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't.